Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I just got off of work and I'm here to talk about the new prize showcase that is coming to Dreyali Lost. So, forgive me if I'm a little tired. Let's get into it and we'll start. Give me your thoughts on it if you're summoning. And let's go. I sure, I'm sure a lot of people aren't summoning because it's again 27th is the anniversary and you guys save for that. But if you love any of these characters, I'm not going to tell you not to get a summon. There was an so addendum. There was an issue in Five Adventure Cecil's Munch on a Menchu skill description in this notice where the skill damage after skill was incor incorrectly noted as damage 115 over one hit. It uh, should be read as 115 over 10 hits. That's a big difference. Alright, so. First one is Cecil? Uh, or Cecil? Something like that. She looks great, by the way. Very nice. Uh, former Knight of Alberia, though she was once an idealistic and as loyal as they come, the horrors of war made her falter and abandon her knighthood. She now works as a mercenary in the north with a drastically changed personality. Sure, I get it. Uh, Chomp some Manichu, shareable 6. Fills the user's Manichu gauge by 50%. If the skill is used after the Manichu gauge is completely filled, before it is depleted, a variant called Scatterfall will be used instead. Scatterfall deals damage to the target and enemies nearby and inflicts Stormlash. Uh, skills required 6,200. Uh, 6, after skill change, damage is 73 over 30 hits. Skill energy required is 6,200. Uh, when it's a shared skill, it's 8,894, which isn't too bad. And Stormlash lasts 21 seconds, triggers every 2.9 seconds, damage is 41. Munch on a Manichu fills the user's Manichu gauge by 50%. If the skill is used after the Manichu gauge is completely filled, but before it is depleted, a variant called Poison Blast will be used instead. Poison Blast deals damage to enemies directly ahead, inflicts poison, it grants the user a Strength Amp. Mmm, no limit on that strength amp either. Skill energy required is 6,200. After skill change, it's damage 115 over 1 hit. Damage is 900. No! <laughs> over 10 hits. 987 over 1 hit. Uh, skill energy required is 6,200. Special effects poison. And a strength amp. Max level 2. Gauge accelerator uh, plus 20%. Speed the rate of may, uh, mode gauge decreased by 20% and benefits the whole team. Uh, Stormlash equals user water resistance 8%. Potent Placebo 2 grants the user a Manichu gauge. When the Manichu gauge is completely filled, it will begin to gradually deplete automatically and grant the user the following effects until it is depleted. Defense is increased by 20%, skill damage is increased by 10%, skill gauge fill rate is increased by 8%. The user's four strikes are powered up and deal more damage during a powered up four strike. If the user is hit by an attack that can be avoided uh, with the damage immunity provided by skills, it will be automatically dodged the attack and their manage gauge will be filled by 10%. <laughs> Also, when shapeshifter the uh, shapeshifting, the Manichu gauge will be filled by 50% when the user shapeshift is undone. Bog resistance 100%. Dodge charge 2 fills 20% of the what? Fills 20% of the skill gauges of the user's first and second skills when the user dodges an attack. After activating this ability, will not act again for 15 seconds. So I feel like she was kind of tailor made to be used with the new Gala Dragon that just came out. And the reason is, is that one, she inflicts both Stormlash and um, Poison. She gives a Strength Amp, which kind of fits with uh, Beast Volk a little bit, because Beast Volk also gives a Strength Amp when he uh, transforms. Uh, but the other thing is, is that with Volk, you're going to want a very much a bigger, like, you'll, you'll be dodging a lot more because your ailment will be down to 100%. will be down to like 150%, so you have a very big chance of getting an ailment. So you're going to be constantly dodging, so this will actually help a whole bunch. I don't know, I kind of think that she's going to end up being pretty good. How good, it's going to have to kind of depend on how much damage she ends up doing, so I'm kind of interested in that. She is a mana caster, it looks like, with the burst ability. Hmm. Is it a shotgun style? Isn't... Don't we have... One moment. Okay, no. We have the other two, but not this type, so that's nice. Um... 
I think she could end up being pretty good, especially if we have Volk. So I kind of actually do want her, but not enough to actually go summoning. <laughs> but that's my current thoughts on her, is that I think she could end up being extremely powerful, but I have to save her anniversary and she's going to be in every banner. So I'm just going to have to wait on it. Next we have Civilian Leaf. I shall overcome the past and see my loyalty and conviction board out. Oh man, this is the part where I'm like so tired from working. <laughs> Leaf has donned a casual wear to hide the fact that he is captain of the White Sparrow Corps. Through his, though his armor is gone, the loyalty and skill of a blade remains intact and still fights tirelessly to find peace for Alberia. Galleon Sparrow, shareable 6, deals damage to enemies directly ahead, applies adaptive suppression and inflicts paralysis. Uh, skill energy required is 3,150. It is 1,783 over 1 hit. When it's a shared skill, it's 7,654. Special effects. Adaptive suppression modifier minus 10%. Last sense I don't is this new? I don't remember anyone else having this. Paralysis lasts 13 seconds, triggers every 3.9 seconds. Uh, unfettered loyalty deals damage to enemies directly ahead, uh, lowers their light resistance and grant. Wow! And grants a strength amp. Damage 437 over 3 hits, damage 817 over 1 hits, gun required is 6880. Special effects light resistance minus 5% for 10 seconds does not stack. Strength amp. Unlimited strength amp. Okay, dragon. It's really funny that so many galley units are. They slap a forced every 30 seconds, and meanwhile, there's units with way better skills that just get unlimited access to strength amp. It's kind of ridiculous. Co-op ability, Dragon Haze 15%, Chain Co-op ability, Light HP below 40% equals Shield 6, Pledge of Justice 2, grants the user a unique 4 strike that deals 2 hits, the second of which inflicts bleeding and increases damage dealt by this 4 strike by 20%. The user will be immune to knockbacks while charging this 4 strike as well as, uh, ex as, well as when executed. Poison resistance 100% and debuff skill time plus 20%. Increases duration and debuff skills by 20%. Wow. He, I mean, new mechanic makes me feel like he'll be, I don't know, I always like new mechanic units because they offer something that no other unit kind of does. Even if you're saying like, oh man, it's only like, what, uh, minus 10% and minus 5% light resistance for a couple, well, a little bit more than 20 seconds. Like, what's 20% so 10 seconds, 11 seconds, maybe? 12 seconds, something like that. It's not much, but I do kind of like that they've tried something different and he is introducing what I think is new mechanics into the game for a light unit, because not a lot of light units have stuff like this, I think. At least I think. I mean, there's definitely light units that uh, debuff, but not. I have not seen these kind of type of debuffs unless they're on like... Unless Mordecai has it and I've just never noticed, because <laughs> I know Mordecai is very good, and maybe this is why. Um, I think both of these units are actually pretty damn solid. From what I'm looking at here, I with light I'm always a little bit iffy because the biggest problem with light is that they have a big asshole in their way, and that giant asshole's name is their Agado fight. And it only very select teams are able to um, farm it a hundred percent in um, auto. So as long as that exists. It's always a very long and dumb process. So if you're a new player to the game, it's going to be a very long time before you kind of get your um, weapon ready for Leaf. And even then, you do have the Gala Prince to kind of deal with in terms of having another sword unit on the team. Uh, but if you don't have the Gala Prince, then, you know. I don't know. Also, obviously, they're filling two completely different roles, so there's no reason why not you wouldn't have both, I guess. But... Uh, that's a lot of grinding on that Akido. Not for me, personally, thanks. And yeah, she seems pretty damn good. I kind of want... I wouldn't mind having either, to be honest. Uh, and as always, you should never summon just for a prize. All the prizes suck ass. Even one of the, one of the Platinum prizes is also not good, in my opinion, because it is not as good. The, the, this ingot should be pr brought down to gold prize. That's what my current feeling on it is. They value it too much. But yeah, that's the end of the video, everyone. I hope you like it. I wish you good luck if you're summoning. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.